Hey, welcome back. It's week four of our Declutter Bootcamp. It's the final week and this one's tough because we're talking about toxic clutter. Toxic clutter are things in your home that make you feel really bad about yourself. And I'm not talking about the dirty dishes or maybe the piles of laundry or clutter that you need to get to. I'm talking about actual items, real things in your home that are bullying you, that are making you feel shame, guilt, or remorse, and they have to go. I'm going to talk about 15 different things that should leave your house. And the first one is absolutely the worst offender, and that is clothing that is too small. If you have clothes in your closet or in your dressers that don't fit you and are too small, these are toxic. Doesn't matter if you plan on losing weight or even you're losing weight right now. If you're opening up your closet and your clothing is telling you that you're too fat, you're not working hard enough, or that you don't look good, they have to to go. Even if you pack them up and put them under your bed or somewhere else in your home to store, they shouldn't be in your bedroom. I don't want every morning you to be bullied by your clothing, shamed by your clothing. You deserve better than that. If you have clothing in your closet that doesn't fit you, it's toxic. It's being a bully and it has to go. The second thing in your home that is toxic clutter, believe it or not, is old hobby supplies. Hobbies can be really healthy. They can be things that make you happy and you love to engage in. But if you have the supplies for a hobby and the truth is you haven't worked on these hobbies in over a year, they're bullying you. They're toxic because every time you look at those supplies, you're thinking, I should be doing this. I wish I was that person. It's your fantasy self accosting you for not being the person you want to be. And that is toxic. Forgive yourself for not being a crafter or a photographer or whatever it is that you have in your home that's a hobby that's making you feel bad. You can love the idea of the hobby, but the supplies, if you're not doing it, really are not healthy. It's time to let them go. The third thing on our list is gifts from loved ones that you don't like. I always throw the mother-in-law under the bus, but maybe you got something from your mom or your grandmother for Christmas and you don't love it, but you feel guilt letting it go. So you're letting your home being filled up with all of these objects just because you're people pleasing. And every time you look at them, you think it gives you this visceral response. Like, I don't like that. I wish I didn't have it in my home. You don't have to people please your stuff anymore. This is about standing up for yourself and saying, I deserve better. And I'm putting boundaries on my home and I'm saying goodbye to gifts that I don't love. Next on our list is also guilty toxic clutter and that's family heirlooms. Maybe it's your grandmother's china or an antique that was passed down, but if you don't love it and you're only keeping it out of guilt, it's really toxic. This is your home and you should fill it with only the things that you love and cherish. And holding on to family heirlooms that you don't like isn't honoring anyone's memories. The best thing you can do to honor a memory is pass it on and also free up some space for the things in your home that you like. Item number five is expensive beauty products. The products that you don't use and that you don't like, but they're still in your bathroom. And you probably saw in week two that I really struggled with this. This was one of the number one things in my home that made me feel so much guilt and so much shame, not only because it was expensive, but also because Beauty products can really make you insecure about yourself, especially if you bought them thinking they would fix a flaw and they didn't. Every time you look at those products, you're reminded about the money you wasted and the fact that you're insecure about part of yourself and it didn't work. Stop the cycle, stop feeling guilty and let go of those toxic products right now. Number six is workout equipment. If you're not using it, the treadmill, the, I don't know, the elliptical machine, is that what it's called? All the things that we buy, the rowing machine, we buy these gadgets in order to get fit. And what happens is it's just something else to dust in our home. But even worse than that, every time we see it, we're reminded of our failure. We're reminded that we should be doing something and we're not. And it's not motivating us to actually work out. The only thing it's doing is making us feel like we're not good enough, we're not trying hard enough, and we're failing. And that's why these things are toxic. They're doing the opposite of what we think they're going to do. They need to leave your home. 
Next on the list is food that you don't like. Maybe you purchase something at Costco in bulk, but you actually hate them. Dad's cookies are gross. I'm just saying, who else has a giant box? But you've probably purchased something and you have a lot of it and you're saving it just in case. Maybe there's a zombie apocalypse. But the truth is, every time you open your pantry, not only is it harder to find the food that you do like, but you're reminded of the mistake you made buying that food every single time. We are not going to have anything in our home anymore that makes us feel bad about ourselves. It is not worth it and that food just let it go. Number eight is still food but listen it's specialty food it's health food. How many of us buy protein powder with the intent of having protein shakes or protein bars or any of this health food that we don't actually like because it's or we're not using for whatever reason, but we hold on to it because it was expensive. And again, because our fantasy self is telling us we should be this person. If you're trying to be someone else and you're not living up to that, that's okay. You are perfect just the way you are. And I do not want anything in your home or in your pantry to be telling you anything different. Let the toxic protein powder go where it belongs, which is in the trash, my friend. If it's gross, throw it out. No regrets. Number nine on the list my husband really struggles with, and this is electronic clutter. So every old computer, every cell phone, every tablet we've ever had, he has the intention of wiping them so that we can donate it as electronic waste. But it's been a hot second. 10 years or so and the stack just keeps getting bigger and all of this clutter he looks at it and I hear him saying I gotta get to that I gotta get to that I gotta get to that it's this constant reminder of a to-do that nobody wants to do that's really making him feel bad about himself it's time to just soak them in water or smash the card inside and forgive yourself and let it go just get them out of your house, donate them, take them to Best Buy, someplace to recycle them, and move on. Number 10 is really hard, and it's books that you don't read. And as a book lover, if you're a book lover, you love having your books, but even something you love can still be toxic if it's telling you negative things. So if you've purchased some books and you've never got around to read them, and the idea of reading them, you're like, I should read it because I bought it, but I don't actually want to, that's toxic. Anything in your home, even things you love, if when you look at them, they're giving you negative thoughts or making you feel bad about yourself in any way, it's time to donate it to someone else so they can feel bad about it. No, just, just get it. Just, I don't know, just get it out of your house. 11 is unfinished projects, and this really includes broken things. So maybe you started something a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, and you never got around to finishing it. That causes a lot of shame and guilt. Every time you look at that, maybe your vacuum broke and you have every intention of fixing it and it's collecting dust in your basement. Again, every time you see it, you're reminded of a failure. You're reminded of what you should be doing and you're not, and how you're not measuring up with your own expectations of yourself. And that is really toxic. It's a lot of pressure to put on a broken vacuum and yourself. So it's time to just get it out of your house and move on. Number 12 is a combination of things you like love hate, okay? It's kids artwork. You love your kids artwork, but every time you see the giant pile of kids artwork, you feel like, oh, I'm a bad parent. I should be filing this. I should be organizing this. I should be doing something with this. And that is why it's toxic. Just keep a few of the best of the best and forgive yourself for recycling the rest. I promise you, your adult child does not want every scribble, every doodle, every macaroni necklace they have ever made. And I am giving you permission to let it go and let go of all the guilt too. Number 13 is unreturned items, and I'm really guilty of this. I've purchased something and it didn't fit or I didn't like it, and I have every intention of taking it back to the store, and then I miss the window, and I don't take it back, and I'm reminded of like, why couldn't you just get your life together, Cass, and take back that shirt or mail back that Amazon thing? Um, but I don't, and so I look at that thing and I feel really shameful. I feel bad about myself and I, I I keep those things in my entranceway and every time I leave or enter the home I'm reminded of my epic terrible failure and it's gross and it's toxic. Donate it. Just 
donate it and don't ever think about it again. Number 14 is expensive things. So many of us hold on to things we don't use and love because it was expensive when we bought it. But the truth is we've already spent the money. The money's long gone as soon as we bought the item and holding on to it doesn't make us any richer. In fact, it's now stealing our space, but it's also making us feel really bad that we spent the money in the first place, that we should be selling this item, we should be doing something. Anytime an item in your home is telling you what you should be doing, it's toxic. And honestly, it doesn't matter how much you spent on the item, that money is gone. Don't let your fear of wasting money waste your precious space in your home. You and your family are worth way more. And number 15, the final item are items from your past self. These are so hard. This is what I call identity clutter. So maybe it's your college or university textbooks that at the time that was part of your identity. It was part of your past life, but you've moved on. Why are you holding on to the text? I'm talking to you, let them go. Or maybe you used to be a skier, but you hurt your knee and you don't ski anymore. Every time you look at these items from your past life, it's reminding you of who you were and making you feel bad about who you are today. So instead, we're not gonna hold on to yesterday because everyone grows and changes. We need to make room for your tomorrow self. So let go of the fantasy, let go of the past self and embrace all all of the good in the now and what's to come. Identifying and removing toxic clutter in your home is so hard. This is the hardest thing to really tackle in your space. So if you've tried and struggled to let go, that's okay. Decluttering is like a muscle. You have to build it up. So just keep practicing. A little bit, a little something every day is going to add up to the confidence and the home that you're craving. Thank you so much for doing this four week boot camp with me. This was all about mindset, giving you a new perspective on decluttering and your stuff. I hope you're feeling really inspired and motivated to start flexing your decluttering muscles as you go through the rest of your home. And stay tuned in November, we have some tough love series coming where we get real about more stuff in your home. We'll see you then. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Some of you, you probably know I was the host of HGTV's Hot Mess House and my co-host last year was Wendell. And I just wanted to talk about Wendell Holland for just like a hot sec, because I've been thinking about him a lot lately and I miss him like crazy, but also he was kind of a little bit toxic in that he made me feel bad about myself. No, he's, he's not at all toxic, but Wendell Holland is the most wholesome, kindest, sweetest, perfect human being on the face of the earth, and it was gross, okay? We'd show up to set, and I'd have my Boston cream donut, cream on chocolate on my face, and my sugary cappuccino, and he'd have his green kale smoothie, and that was it. And he'd do push-ups before set, and he, like, donates things to homeless shelters in his spare time, and cooks everything from scratch from his girlfriend, and he won Survivor, okay? He lived off of snails and bugs and did the challenges and won Survivor and is honestly the greatest human being I've ever met. And I don't know if you have someone in your life, like I have lots of people in my life who are awesome, but no one to the epic level of Wendell Holland, okay? Not only is does he own this successful furniture company, he can build and actually use tools, unlike other carpenters I've worked with on television sets in the past, he can actually do it. Um, he's sweet and kind and handsome, but also he's a lawyer, you guys. He's brilliant too. So I'm just, Every time I talk about Wendell, Joe's like, oh, Wendell, he's a little jelly. But the truth is, he's just such a kind, awesome person, and I miss him like crazy. But also, he kind of made me feel a little bit bad about myself, because even though he's a lot younger, he was adulting so hard. He was like, he was just doing life right. Let me know in the comments below if you have a friend or family member that just seems to have their stuff together like in an epically annoying way. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.